Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I have you in a room I don't normally do. We're indoors because I am going to take you along on an adventure with me of figuring out how much I can get from an entire freaking bushel. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's heavy. <laughs> a bushel of green beans. So I was at a farmer's stand that I go to, and I said to them, they said, oh, we sell things in bulk. I was going to buy some bulk peaches to make some peach jam and stuff like that. And they said, well, we sell things in bulk. I said, what are you going to give me for green beans? So I bought these green beans on a whim. Uh, I've wanted to do some kind of bulk processing project at some time. And I thought, oh, green beans, you know, I'm not having a good year with my garden for them. So I might as well buy them in bulk, make my, as Jess from Roots and Refuge says, make my waiting room my classroom. So I'm going to try to see how much I can get out of them for three things. One, I'm going to make my favorite pickled green bean recipe, which is a dilly bean recipe that my grandma adapted from a ball book, ball canning book recipe. Two, I'm going to, and I've adapted further to be a little spicier. Two, I'm going to make pressure canned. So that's water bath canning for the first one. Two, I'm going to be making pressure canned green beans, just plain old green beans in salt water, but pressure canning is a little bit complicated. So I'm going to share what I've learned about it so far with you. And then three, I'm going to be making frozen green beans. So we're going to see how much we can get from them. And I'm going to share some of the tips I've learned with you. Just jumping in here real quick to say that this is going to be a long video with a lot of beginner canning basics. So if you've already started canning and you know about a lot of these, I'm going to include chapters um, in the timestamps so that you can skip around. Now, real quick primer on water bath canning versus pressure canning. Water bath canning is basically for anything that is pickled or candied or really sugary or acidic. So you can do tomatoes, you can do jams and jellies and pie fillings, you can do anything you're gonna be pickling that has like a vinegar or and or lemon recipe. So you can do a lot with water bath canning. You don't have to do pressure canning. But in my goal to be empowered, to understand how to make my own food, to learn the processes and, and feel um, in control of my food supply chain to some extent, I have wanted to learn pressure canning. So I've been learning it slowly. Um, so the pressure canning is for things more alkaline. So um, like meats, vegetables, if you don't pickle them, um, broths, things like that. And that is to avoid botulism. It basically gets to a high enough temperature through pressure for an extended period of time that botulism isn't, isn't capable of forming if it's done right. All right, so I'm gonna share with you my tips. And one quick thing, while I'm sharing with you what I've learned, I definitely recommend checking out official like ball websites, canning books, other things that will tell you the proper processes. In case I make some mistakes, I really want you to, to use the proper processes. I watched a lot of videos and learning what I learned, but I also read a lot of books and a lot of like national canning blogs and other things to, to, to make sure I was doing the right processes. So. All right, let's get going. For both water bath canning and pressure canning, you're gonna wanna have jars that feel around the rim. There's no cracks or weird blemishes at the top where you don't see any visible cracks in it. Um, you're going to want to sterilize them. So I recently cleaned out the sink and sterilized it so I don't mind setting it down in here. I'm using a previously unused sponge to, to wash them. If I don't have the ability to do that or I'm out of sponges, I'll try to run them through the dishwasher um, or I'll wash them and um, I'll put them in the uh, water bath canner. I'll set it in the water until it gets boiling and then leave it in there a few minutes to help sterilize it. But since I have these available, excuse the noise in the background, um, my I'm washing my, my dishwasher is making a lot of noise. But you want to have, you know, you want to clean them, soap and water, hot water, and yeah, just give them a nice wash. You know, if you, if they've been sitting around without a cover on them for a long time, <laughs> you're going to probably want to rinse out before you do it. These I just used uh, about less than a week ago, so they're not dusty or anything like that. Okay. Uh, I also give the lids a wash in case somehow some residue was left from before. You want to have lids that don't have any big problems with them on the inside. So this lid hasn't been used before. You can see kind of how there's no indentation, but even if they have a little bit of an indentation, I have found they're good to use. Probably I, well, I've used them twice so far, but this one has like some rusty kind of stuff on it. Um, 
it has a label on top of just fine. I'm actually gonna toss this because of that. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't wanna risk some rust. I try to use new lids or lids at least that are, um, you know, pretty perfect. You wanna wash these now. The old water bath canning rules, old canning rules with that you'd have to leave these sitting in hot water. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just have them sitting on a plate nearby or something after you clean them. This is a clean towel over here. So I'm just gonna set them over here. Now, one thing you definitely don't wanna do is you don't wanna have your jars cold. I think room temperature is fine because you're gonna be filling them with boiling water before you put them in the canner. Now, if you're gonna be using them immediately, you can just set them like this. A little bit of water in them won't be the end of the world. Now, if you're getting started with canning, you can buy online for a fairly reasonable price, like a, a canning kit, a set. Um, the one I bought came with a funnel. It'll fit in the jar like this. Uh, I also have a metal one that fits in the jar. But for me, it included a lifter. You know, it sits on the, like that. You can get a fancier one that I have, but it's not as long that does the same effect. Um, this is for, this is for lifting the lids if you had them in water. Um, I don't use it anymore, but it is kind of nifty to get out of the water if you don't want to get your hands wet. Uh, but I don't, I don't store them in water anymore. And then this is for being able to put down in to get the bubbles out of your jar. But honestly, a metal chopstick or a wooden chopstick will do the same trick. It's what I use more often than this. Uh, and some of these come with an actual inch measure, so you can tell how much uh, how much headspace you're leaving. So in most jars, the for recipes, they're going to have one or less inches of headspace. You're going to need to leave a certain amount of headspace, basically space where there's no liquid or food um, for the jar to, to process correctly. So having some way to measure that is good. I actually have a ruler that I use that uh, when I was first getting going, and I would just like stick it in and say, okay. That's, that's one inch down to right. You can see that's one inch down to like right about where that thing is, the bottom of that. And for green beans, you want one inch headspace. You're gonna do it to there. Um, and then also a lot of kits come with this, which is actually just a clamp. I just, I don't use it anymore, but I used to use it as a way to hold it so you don't have to get your hands hot. I just use a hot pad around this instead, but that's so you can, Put the lid on and tighten it and then you're going to need some way to <laughs> get the water the liquid or whatever you've cooked from over uh, on the stove to uh, your jars and this is a nice ladle that i have that's for canning this actually fills one of these for liquid when it has stuff in it usually fills the whole pint um, but you want some kind of ladle i like this because it can sit on the side of the um, pot when you're resting. And then you also want to have on hand some distilled white vinegar, regardless of whether you're using it in your recipe. The distilled white vinegar you're going to use to wipe the rims of your jars after you've poured stuff into them. Even when you use these, um, the chances that some food particles get up there is high and that could prevent the, the lid from sealing. So you're going to need to wipe it down with white vinegar and I just use a clean paper towel. Um, soaked in white vinegar to wipe the rims and you'll see me do that in the video. So this is my water bath canner and you can see it comes with a rack on the inside. This actually lifts up, both sides lift up to hang over the top but I'm not worried about that for now. You'll need, regardless of whether you have this or something else, you'll need a rack that keeps the jars from touching the bottom of the pot and when you fill this thing up you want to fill it up to just past, right about there, just past this line um, regardless, let me show you here, even with a pint jar, it comes up to about here. So you're going to need the water to be here. You want to make sure there's at least two inches of water above the top of the jars in order for them to cook properly. Okay. So my pressure canner comes with a different thing. So here's the lid. It has a ring that goes, a rubber ring that goes around the inside. Now I've already cleaned it, but you're going to want to, um, before using it every time you're going to want to wash it as well as afterwards and make sure it's not cracked, make sure it's still pliable. Um, you wanna look through the hole in this uh, vent. You need to be able to see sunlight through it to know it's not clogged. I'll uh, do a little bit of this with the lock just to make sure it's opening freely and not stuck. And then you have the pressure regulator and the pressure gauge. And the pressure gauge goes 
on the lid and you're supposed to have it checked. Um, I think it's every two years. It goes in like this. And you never, if you can help it, you never want to get the gate, the top of it wet. And you're just going to screw it on. Yeah. Screw it on like that. I try to screw it so it's facing forward, which is towards this thing. As tight as I can get it. All right. So if you've washed and cleaned all of this, um, this is the rack that come, came with it. You never want to set jars on the bottom of the pot. <laughs> you always want to use a rack. The other thing to know is with a pressure canner, you're actually going to have a very small amount of water in the bottom in comparison. Um, and let's see if I can get the camera to show. Can you see those two lines right there? And there, those are higher lines. And then there's one down here, right where you can see the bottom of the, uh, the stain. That indented line right there is how much water you're going to put in. And I think it's two quarts or two, I don't know. I just put boiling water or really hot water in and then I get it going. But you want to fill it to that line. The first step for all three recipes I'm making is to trim the green beans. You want to trim off the end where the stem was and look for any bad green beans or any parts that you need to cut out. Um, this is I do this before rinsing just because it also allows me to sort of clean the green beans. If I see something hanging on it, I can just like wipe it off. It's easier than having to rinse it multiple times uh, more than I normally do. Next, you want to rinse them. You want to get them nice and clean. I tend to do at least two rinses, um, but if the water doesn't look clear or there seems to be stuff on them, I might do a third rinse. Okay, now let's go to the first recipe I'm going to be making, which is pressure canned green beans. So you want to trim the green beans down to about one to two inches. I'm not super picky, and I don't worry if there's like ends that are shorter or longer than the others. Really, when you open the jar and eat the green beans, you don't notice a huge difference. They all have just about the same texture. So just cut it however makes sense to you. Now my pressure canner fits seven pints. So here I am measuring how many pints I can get out of my cut green beans. And I did this the night before I was going to pressure can. You know, sometimes you have to just do things in batches. So I put them in a Ziploc bag to put in the fridge so that I can process them um, in the cans the next day. So next you want to fill that pressure canner with boiling hot water up to that first low line. Separately, for the water you're going to put into your jars, you want to get some distilled, or I ran mine through a bearded filter, water going in a big pot. Next you want to fill your jars up to that one inch headspace line with your green beans. I use a funnel to help kind of get them all in there neatly. And this is called cold packing, which means you're basically using them fresh or raw. Hot packing would mean that you would pre-cook the green beans, but I prefer, they're already going to get pressure cooked plenty, so I prefer to just put them in raw, which is totally fine. And you want to use pickling or canning salt, which basically is salt that doesn't have any anti-caking agent in it like you would have in your normal table salt. I used one half teaspoon per pint. Now, salt is optional, but I like to include it. This is my first time trying it, but I am glad I included it because when I opened up the jar, it tasted good, and I've heard it helps the flavor just be better for them overall. You want to then go ahead and fill the jars with the boiling water. And again, you want to fill them right to about that one inch mark. So then you'll want to use a chopstick or this tool that came with my kit to move the green beans around and get all the air bubbles out. You'll notice the water goes down a tiny bit and you'll need to come back and add a little more of the water to get it to that one inch headspace. I forgot to film the wiping down the rims with um, a paper towel and white vinegar. But after you've done that, you want to put the lids on and then put the rings around it and when you tighten those rings you want them to be what's called finger tight which means basically you don't use any torque of your wrist to go past what your fingers could do if you didn't have your wrist helping it. Now be careful those jars are hot. You want to use your jar lifter to carefully place them in the boiling or close to boiling water and you want to leave just a tiny bit of space. There needs to be a little bit of gap between each of the jars touching. Now, I think if the tops touch, it's not as big of a deal, but you don't really want those glass jars rattling up against each other. And then you're going to put the lid on, and it has, with that valve, it is kind of hard to tighten, but once it's set down, you just push it over until the handles are basically on top of each other. Put your stove on high now and get it to the point where steam is coming out consistently for 10 minutes from that little vent on the side next to the gauge. Okay, so we've had this going for 10 minutes 
And now I'm going to drop this on it. And fairly soon, as an indicator of whether this is working, this little thing should pop up to show the pressure is building. There we go. Okay, good. You can see the pressure is already starting to rise. Now I have what's called a dial gauge pressure canner, which basically means I have to watch the pressure levels. So I have to, for green beans, I have to get them up to 11 pounds pressure, which is the 11 mark at this gauge before I can start the timer. For green beans in pints, you're going to want to do 20 minutes at 11 pounds with this kind of a setup or 25 minutes for a quart. One really important caveat here, you cannot let the pressure level go below the 11 pound mark at any point during that 20 or 25 minute period. If you do, you have to start the timer over again once you get it back to the 11 pounds. So for me, I tend to keep it a little bit above the level that's recommended just as kind of like a safety net. So we've done the full 20 minutes, turn off the gas, and I'm gonna move this over here and let it cool completely till the pressure is down to zero. After that, I'm gonna take that off. And then you let it sit for another 10 minutes before you take the lid off. We've got it, 10 minutes have passed, it's cooled down, and I need to release it. So this is where you just slide it. So the handles slide like that, I don't know if you can see very well. And then, important, open it facing away from you because there will be steam coming out. And inside we have a nice look up at the jars. All right, let's get these pulled out. They're still gonna be really hot, so you definitely don't wanna touch them. In fact, I'm just gonna use my glove, but. In fact, you can see they're still bubbling. An early sign of whether your jars are sealing is whether you hear them pop, which means that bubble in the middle has gone down. All right, so here's the jars, boiling hot. Um, you can, hey, there's a popping sound. Uh, I'm gonna let this sit for at least 12 hours because you don't wanna mess with the seal. Okay, now my grandma's dilly bean recipe. Our ingredients for this recipe are two pounds of green beans trimmed, which we're working on. Uh, one teaspoon cayenne pepper, this is for four pints. One teaspoon cayenne pepper, I'm going to use my Thunder Mountain Pepper flakes instead, and I'll just use a little less than a fourth teaspoon because this is pretty spicy. Uh, four cloves of garlic. I'm gonna need to peel these, but um, I'll usually put, you know, one to two, a small one and a bigger one in each jar. The dill, fresh dill. Uh, I got this from the grocery store, but if you can, if you are growing dill, it, when they start to put up those flower heads with the seeds, that is when they're perfect to, for canning. That's what my grandma loved to do her canning was when we had the, um, was when they had the flower dill heads. But if you don't have them, this is good. You're gonna need distilled vinegar. Make sure it's distilled, not apple cider. And you're gonna need water and salt. And for salt, if you can, try to get a pickling or canning salt. My grandma doesn't put this in, but I put in um, one to two black peppercorns actually two to three black peppercorns per jar, but she didn't like black pepper, so she never would have put black pepper in it, but I like black pepper, so it's going in. But if you want my grandma's authentic one, you wouldn't put black pepper in. Okay, so we got the ingredients together. I'm gonna clean this up and trim it out so that I have some nice sprigs to put in. So the recipe calls for two and a half cups of water and two and a half cups of vinegar, and the important thing is here is that it's equal parts, right? So basically, if I wanted to do a double batch, I would do five cups of water and five cups of vinegar, which is actually what I ended And then up one doing. fourth cup salt if you're doing the regular batch, or a half cup salt if you're doing the double batch. Put the lid on the pot because that water, salt, vinegar creates some real fumes, but get it boiling and also get your water bath canner filled with water and starting heating up as you prep the rest of your ingredients. And that's because that water bath canner will take probably 20 to 30 minutes to get to a boil. Now the trick for dilly beans is to start off by having the jar on its side and finding some straight pieces, um, some straight green beans and start stacking them next to each other on the jar against the wall. This will give a really pretty picture of the green beans afterwards where they're all sort of straight up and down. The first time I tried doing this, no one had taught me and I just kind of threw them all in and they were all over the place and the jar looked horrible. 
uh, and I learned my lesson. So you just want to pack it as tight as you can, starting from the bottom at an angle and then filling in the gaps as you go. The recipe calls for one fourth inch head space. So you want to make sure the green beans are not taller than that. You may notice a little bowl on the side where I put the taller ones that I find in. And that's because I, you, I'm going to be doing a taller quart size jar of these green beans. But you want to make sure you have space also for tucking in the garlic at the top as well as that fresh dill and pepper flakes. So I'm just going to pour the boiling solution into the jars one at a time. It should take about two ladles, maybe a ladle and a half, about two ladles. Hallelujah! Looks like we're going to have enough. I'm going to turn this off for the moment. Now because this thing is way too wide to fit in here to get out any bubbles, I'm just using like a metallic chopstick. Just helps the green beans to get any bubbles out. Kind of helps to shake it up a little bit. Now using a vinegar soap paper towel, wipe off the rims, put the lids on, and then the bands or rings, you want to put them on, and again, just finger tight, which means just as tight as your fingers can do without any additional torque. Then you're going to want to put those jars in your water bath can, which should be already pretty close to boiling or already boiling, and you want them to not be up against each other fully. It's okay if the caps touch, but you don't want the glass touching each other, and then lower them into the pot. You're going to cook them for 10 minutes at a full boil. So don't start your timer until it is already at a full hard boil. After 10 minutes, turn off the stove and you can wait five minutes, take them out immediately and set them out on a towel. Make sure there's enough space between the jars for the air to circulate for them to cool down. And similar to with pressure canning, you want to let them sit for 12 to 24 hours before you touch them which helps ensure the seal is fully there. And you'll notice the beans end up coming to the top and they'll be liquid at the bottom. That's perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. It's, it's the way it ends up in jars and don't panic if you see that. Okay, so it's the next day. When you're done canning, the next day you're not quite done. So you need a couple of things. First of all, you wanna take off those metal bands off of them. You do not wanna store them with it. It can hide whether something has gone wrong with the jar. And then you want to check for whether the seal is complete. And I'm going to rinse these off because they can also rust from just sitting around and not having been rinsed. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to check each of the jars. So a good way to check is just tapping the top. You just do your finger. You can also do hear that ping. It's not like a dull sound. They should sound relatively similar. Now the deeper ones, depending how far you fill them, depending on how big the container is, they're not going to all ping the same, but you want to ping. So let's see. Okay, so they passed the ping test. Second thing is if you can lift them up and the lids don't come off and you pull a little bit, you're good. So I'm going to do the lift check for each of these. And the reason I'm not rinsing them off first is because, let's say, if a seal didn't happen, uh, I don't want to get water in there yet, especially for the pickled ones. Now, I haven't had this happen yet, but if, oh, no, that's not true. When I pressure canned the black beans, there was one that didn't seal, and you could actually, you could actually smell the black beans the next day. These will all pass the test. The next step is, you got to rinse them, like I said. So, I just do water. And rinse the top, rinse the bottom. If there is like a residue that doesn't come off with the water, you can do a tiny bit of like a mild soap with a sponge or paper towel or something. But I find that just a quick rinse with the water does the job just fine. And then you need a permanent marker. You can use a pen too. Uh, I have permanent markers for the garden. So, um, you know, and if you're doing a similar batch, and you've done like a little bit different for each, make sure to keep track of which is which, like if you did a hotter batch, um, you know, so you can label them. All right, I'm just gonna start off with the uh, pickled green beans. So I'm gonna put, let's do a clean lid. <laughs> I'm gonna put dilly beans, uh, because I added the um, Thunder Mountain pepper, I'm gonna put spicy. My handwriting is terrible. And then uh, I'm going to put, you could put the exact date, but in my place just August 2023 works. 
or even August 23. The other rule for canned goods is you don't stack them like this. That could break the seal. Um, I haven't done this, but I've read that if you do want to stack them, put a piece of cardboard down or a box or something that doesn't put pressure on the center of this. So I could theoretically take a ball box, put it up, and store stuff up here, right? But you don't want it setting that concave part setting there because that can break the seal. It's Sunday and we're down to the last bit of the box. Honestly, it felt like I would never get here. <laughs> we're down to the last two bags of green beans. This is the last of that bushel. Uh, I've already rinsed and trimmed all of them and it's been about a week since I filmed the last clips. Um, they've been sitting in the fridge and I need to look them over before I do the final thing, which is the freezing green beans. So this is probably the, I, went, I think for this video, I went from like the most complicated to the least, which is probably the opposite of order I should have gone. But basically for freezing green beans, what I do, and you don't have to, but what I've read and what's worked well for me is you need to blanch them before you freeze them. So that means getting a pot of water boiling and then I'm gonna need another big thing after I drain them to cool them immediately, like an ice bath. I just use cold water. It works fine to, to stop to stop the cooking process, basically. And you can do them as whole green beans, or you can cut them into the one to two inch pieces. Okay, so we've got a pot of boiling water. And because I've got a big enough pot, I'm gonna go ahead and risk it and put, maybe not the whole thing in, but, hmm. I need to do this in a way that, oh, I missed a green bean. I do this in a way that I'm not gonna get a huge splash back. So, there we go. You blanch them for two to three minutes at a boil. So you bring it back up to a boil and you get them to cook. Okay, I think I can fit all of them in now without a big splash. There we go. All right, so it's at full boil, and now I'm gonna give it two minutes on the clock to cook, to blanch. Okay, time to start ladling them over into the cooling thing. I could probably do this more efficiently and then, you know, using colander to drain it and that kind of thing, but eh, sometimes I like to do things the harder way. <laughs> Let me get the cold water going in here. I think I'm gonna do this so that it has this stay up higher. There we go. So I kind of jerry-rigged it a little bit so that the colander is higher than the bowl. Okay, it feels like they've pretty much cooled down, stopped cooking. To speed up the process, I'm gonna spin them in this. It won't fit all at once, but... Hmm. Good. It should fit a good amount. In my salad spinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's getting a lot of the water out. That's awesome. Where's that bowl? Oh yeah. There's a lot more dry. Still some water, but... Not near as wet as they were. Oh yeah. Yeah, that got a good amount of water out. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, so what we're gonna do is pretty simple. I fill a bag <laughs> and I'll put it in the freezer. Although for this case, I'm gonna leave them piled up so we can look at it for a final review of everything we've done. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to fill them more than that because that's definitely one serving or more for my husband and I. Okay. 
It'll also allow them to lay flat a little better, which kind of helps with storage space in the freezer. All right, so the moment of truth. Have you laid down bets on how much you think this is gonna produce? It's a lot. All right, let's see. <laughs> okay, 19 pints of pressure canned green beans. This is an empty one my husband and I already ate. Two quarts of pressure canned green beans six quarts of my grandma's dilly bean recipe and six including what's left of one that we've already torn into of the pints of dilly beans and then four three-fourths full quart bags of blanched green beans about to go in the freezer a lot of work but uh and i won't do it more than once a year but yeah it was doable i'm glad i got it th got through it and i hope you learned something along the way and thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and uh I'll see you next time.